this video is all about how I really activated my third eye and how I then used it for channeling and how you can open your third eye and use it for channeling too. Um, and yeah, stick around till the end to go through step by step on how to open up yourself to channel and then close off after you finish channeling and yeah. So let's get straight into the video. Okay, so I have a few notes on my phone here just in case I look down. So the first one is I want you to really start to work with your third eye. So you can do this by wearing the colour um, purple because this is what colour our third eye chakra is. Wearing the colour or um, holding crystal and having crystals around you that are purple. Um, also, you can do meditations to open your third eye and healings on your third eye, which I will link both of them in the description box below. I already have them up on my channel. So we can do um, healing sessions on our third eye and it just helps us like open it because maybe some people have blocks on their third eye. Um, maybe it was from like past lifetimes where they uh, something happened and they got frightened and they you know turned it off or whatever it could be a variety of different things but yeah it's just super simple i have um the video on my channel already i have a healing playlist actually on all your different chakras so you can go ahead and just watch the um healing one for your third eye to make sure it's nice and clear and um you know healed so it's in a good um you can trust it you can trust your intuition so that would be good to start off with is the healing. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear background noise, my son has a cough. Um, and yeah, and then also I have an activation meditation for your third eye as well. So I also um, recommend that one. Going on from that, you know, you can use the crystals. You can also, people say, you know, wearing um, the colour that you're on, what chakra you're working on really does help. That is, none of that is necessary. I would definitely recommend the healing and the activation meditation, but you don't have to have the crystals. You don't have to wear the colours. It's just something to prompt um, and assist you because it kind of like is what you're doing at that time. Like um, maybe one week you work on your throat chakra and you wear them colours and things like that. But this is just kind of like a little extra. So the next thing I do want to talk about is you must do this before you open your third eye. Do not do it after like I did and you know I will be making um, a video on what happened when I opened my third eye because I didn't do it. Um, I would say I didn't do it incorrectly. I just didn't know what to expect um, and I yeah I threw myself into the deep end so if you write your boundaries down on a piece of paper read over them every day for maybe a few days to make sure your guides know exactly what you're okay with I imagine my guides as kind of like a little um uh like security on my shoulder and like this is okay, like a security guard, like, yeah, you're allowed this to come through. No, she doesn't want this to come through. So it's like a bouncer and like, no, you're not coming through. So that's how I imagine it. And because I didn't set any boundaries, everything was just coming through. And I, had, I hadn't I had told my guides what I was okay with and what I wasn't. I had just opened my third eye and um, it ha it happened naturally and I wasn't expecting it to happen and all of my Claire's um, you know was just coming in all at once and it really overwhelmed me so setting your boundaries before you open your third eye having them on a piece of paper so maybe before bed for like a week you read them each night like um, the like talk to your spirit guides all the time anyway but you know, these are my boundaries, these are what I'm okay with. And, you know, they will they will follow through with what you're um you're putting out there. But it's also like if you can't just list what your boundaries are, if you don't firmly believe them, then they're not gonna be set. So if you you could literally say it once and if you are strong and firm and you really like you know that that's done, then it is done. But it's just kind of it's better to do it a few times. 
So I will give some examples of what I um my boundaries were first just to give you an idea. It does not have to be the same. You don't even have to have any of you don't want, but the I will explain why. So my first boundary was I only want to see things with my eyes closed because I was scared when I seen loads of things in in like my house and like when I was out and it was just all the time. The, moving on to my second one, I only want to connect when I am intending to connect. So um, there was no cut off point for me, like it was just constant. I was being woke up at night um, I, it was like all through the day and I was really tired and I was scared because I didn't have a spiritual mentor at this time and um, it just spontaneously happened and I was very frightened because I didn't I was very early on in my journey of spiritual awakening too so I didn't really know what was happening and it was quite overwhelming because I didn't understand it um, and then also the third one which is the most important I only want to connect with love and light so you don't get any scary things happening so this is super important, especially when we're channeling for other people and um, channeling information. We don't want them lower vibrational beings to come in and, um, you know, pretend to be good and like tell you false information um, because that does quite, that does happen. But people just assume that whoever they're speaking to are, you know, is it benevolent? Is that the good one? I never know which one is which. But like they just um, assume that they're good beings. But you need to be responsible with what you're um, telling other people with what you've channeled. So always making sure you only connect with love and light. Super important. So they're what my boundaries were at first. I have now actually recently, only very recently, changed my boundaries um, I did a little bit like by a little bit so now the only boundary I have is I only want to connect with love and light and that's my only boundary now because I feel very confident in myself and my channeling now to open myself up more. So um, also make sure you stick around until the end to make sure you know how to open your your um, your channeling and close it so you know um, you know you can have that break when you close it off. Um, okay, so the next one is understand that everyone can do this and not just the chosen ones. Because honestly, so many people kind of are like, yeah, well, I can channel. And it's like they just have a spiritual ego. Don't fall for it. It's it's really cool that we can channel. And at first, it's like, yes, I can channel. It's so fun and it's so cool. And it is, I agree. It's really fun. And um, well, it can be, yeah. But just know that it's not just because they are any better than you. I can channel, you can channel, everyone in the whole world has the ability, they have these clairs, um, but they just kind of are not, they haven't realised because they've suppressed them so much, just like people are not awakened, but everyone has the ability to awaken in their lifetime. Everyone has all of these gifts and way more um, you know, it's not just about channeling and all of the Claire, like I, I will go into that on another video. That's going to be part two, like which Claire is for what. So like seeing, hearing, feeling, touching, things like that. And then also I'm going to be going over a few different things that will be able to help you with channeling. But that's in part two because this video is going to be way too long. But just know that honestly, you are just the same it sounds mean it if when I say it like this but you're just the same as everyone else everyone is born with the same um abilities to be able to do these things you just have to believe that you're don't put other people on a pedestal and be like yeah but they can do that because that's them no everyone has to learn everyone starts at, you know at a certain point I am not like the best at channeling I'm really not but that's just because um, my third eye awakening was a little bit scary for me. Well, it wasn't even a third eye awakening. It was like when my third eye opened, it was quite scary for me because I wasn't, um, I didn't have the right support around me for that to happen. And I didn't know about it. I didn't have the knowledge. That's exactly why I'm sharing these videos to make sure you guys feel comfortable and open it in a safe way where you know that you 
are just the same as everyone else everyone you're not going crazy but also going on to the next point you're you're the power the powers are all within you so if some let's say if something scary came through and you've seen something scary you could just say okay you, you need to leave now or you could send it light like just imagine light going to it and like just this light is unconditional love and you're sending this unconditional love to it and it literally just disappears that's how you know you can get them to go up to the love and light and it will transmute them to love and light or you can if you are not you know you're not confident to do that you can just tell them to leave and they have to leave the power is within you because one if it's a good um like a love and light being then they will always respect you so if you're fearful they will always leave anyway and two if it's a negative being then you are you have the power you're connected to source energy which is just completely unlimited it's just there's it's never ending unconditional love and they are not connected to that so just one of you is like you could like defeat like 500 of them like that's how much more powerful love is to what they have they're disconnected from source so yeah so basically um just know that all the power power is within you and by channeling this is just like at the tiniest tiniest little bit of your power you have so much power within you so really really trust how powerful you are before you start channeling and things like that because you just need to just know how magical you are i just feel like i'm just gonna just keep saying that but you know like you're so powerful you can do way more than just channeling there's so many other things out there that this seems really cool right now and this seems really out there to do but it's really not it's a lot simpler than you think and the more you detach from your ego and be like wow I like this is like on a pedestal channeling messages the more you detach from your ego and take it off a pedestal the easier it's going to become because you're going to realize that actually I'm so much more powerful than this and this is just comes natural to me because it really does it because it comes natural to everyone okay so the next one is write everything down that you see hear feel whatever just write it all down because you will forget so I always forget everything that I'm channeling I very rarely remember any of it but I just think it's just because we have so many things coming through our brain and it's just not really something that our physical body is going to be able to hold on to to be honest I don't think um and also I like to think that it's it's kind of privacy for um my clients as well because um you know it's not it's not my information to know it's for them but yeah I don't think that's actually why but that's how I like to think about it okay also the next two things is don't doubt yourself and don't try to make sense of absolutely everything you see at first because sometimes it might just be a dash of light or um a sound or um it could be um i remember once i seen um the person next door to us in work it's kind of like our work neighbor if that's even a thing um i remember once i seen him outside of his shop like in my vision i seen him um not feeling very well and, like holding his chest and i was panicking i was like on oh, my days he's 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 he wasn't well at the time either so I was really panicking like I need to go and check on him like is he okay and I was just having the most awful like uh anxiety and dread and like oh my god I just really hope he's okay and I couldn't stop thinking about him and I went over and he was fine and like weeks and weeks later he ended up getting poorly again and going into hospital but for ages I was like oh my god if I don't tell anyone he might something might happen to him but honestly not as not everything is for you to go and speak about so um you can't save everyone for one and two that could have just been like 
a, a symbol for something it doesn't mean that that's exactly what's going to happen that could just mean like okay like you know um just just keep an extra eye on him make sure he's okay you know um make sure he's looking after himself it doesn't mean that like if I don't say anything then he's gonna get hurt and then it's all my fault because that's what I was carrying for a little while so don't take everything for exactly what it is it could be like a symbol for something it could be that that is what's gonna happen and you know you'll get to know your own unique style because um how everyone channels is a little bit different so um I know that someone that I used to know I remember them seeing um, a train going past really, really fast in the middle of a reading. And to her, she just had this knowing. She was just like, okay, always on, a, always rushing, like rush hour for the trains. And that's what she just, um, you know, she just had a thought about that when she's seeing the train. So then, then when she sees a train, she knows it's that. Or when she sees like a car, she knows it's a car accident. You know, there could be so many different things but you need to learn to just trust what you feel, write everything down, so don't try and overcomplicate things at first and try and figure everything out, but also, like, um, you need to start learning your own language with it, so at first, when you are doing a reading on someone else, it might not be exactly, you know, what they was expecting, and it might not be exactly right, but it's completely normal, it's completely fine, and you know um yeah it's kind of your own language you just have to they'll show you symbols or make you feel things or hear things and honestly now I don't even know my own language I literally just see t like I just say what I hear or see or whatever and I just let them interpret interpret it because um I don't do channeling for um people anyway I just do it as I'm doing the healing and sometimes it just random randomly comes in through for my friends and things like that but I just say okay so I can see this and I can feel this and they're like oh my god that's amazing like and they just know what it means so sometimes you can just say exactly what you see and they'll just know and they'll you know figure it out for themselves but sometimes you might have to try and figure out what that means to you and that's how your spirit guides will show you. So yeah, that's the next one. Um, and okay, so the next one and then we're going to go into how to open and close your um, chakras in order to channel to make sure you can have a rest and you're not going to be getting bombarded all the time so make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe um okay so the next one is acknowledging your spirit guides or your spirit team or whoever you're channeling or you feel connected to maybe you feel more connected to your higher self but just acknowledging them and telling them when they give you that little bit of guidance um even if it's like an angel number if it's a feather if it if they're saying like if you just had a thought of check your emails or um if you just had a thought of like go and see that person or whatever it is um just acknowledge them and just say thank you for your guidance like i hear you like or just say like um like anything like that really because one they are beings as well they do like you know you they like you to be nice to them and kind to them and appreciate them just as much as we like that um and they are learning their lessons too on a different vibration than us but you know it's still nice that we acknowledge them um and then also when you do this then they know oh, okay she's getting the messages she's seeing the signs now we can connect to her more like she's ready for more and if you're not seeing anything at first it's just they know what um you're ready for and they're gonna give you little bits and little bits um to kind of test the waters like how are you doing um you know and then when you acknowledge that like okay I had the thought to do this so I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna follow my intuition then they'll be like yeah she's ready for the next one or she's ready for the next one or you might just have a spontaneous one like me and it all just floods in all at once so yeah, make sure you're acknowledging them when you're seeing the signs and hearing the, the guidance and things like that, however it comes through at, the, at first. 
just so they know that you're actually getting the message and you're understanding so they can then move you on to the next point. Okay, so now the bit that you've all been waiting for, how you open and close your yourself to basically channel. So what I first do, I actually go ahead and burn some sage. Um, I just clear my house a lot, especially clear your house so much if you're going to be opening yourself up to channel. Like just make it your routine to do it at least once a week. And if you're channeling a lot, every time you channel. So I sage everywhere first and I just sit and I calm my mind. And I kind of just focus on my breathing really, really slowly um, inhale and then slow exhale to really help calm my mind. So I get into a meditated state and then I just tell my guides, spirit guides with love and light, I am opening myself up to channel messages. And then I imagine all my chakras opening, it's beautiful. I imagine them as lotus flowers and they're all closed and then as I tell them I am opening myself up I imagine them all opening up and up and up and up and they're all opening and that's how I tell my guides you know that I'm ready and I'm open to channel and you could change it you could have you know um I was telling my auntie the other day you could imagine like a diamond spinning and when like when you open yourself up they start to spin and then when you close, they, they just are still. You can imagine whatever you want. Make it your own. Make your own little ritual that every time you open yourself up, they know what you're trying to do. You're not always going to have to do this, but this is a good way of showing them, like, look, I'm ready and I'm open for messages right now. So, yeah, make your own little um, ritual up. And then um, you know, basically just sit in the meditative state meditate and just allow things to come through calm your mind as much as possible but then just allow the messages to come through it might just be a little flash it's really really quick that used to happen to me all the time at first it was so quick I never knew what it even was because it was just like it was gone in a second but I just still thank them like okay I see you thank you so much and um, you know next time I'm going to see it for longer and I'm going to be able to hold that image and I'm just so grateful that I, you know I'm I'm noticing things happening so just be grateful for it all really and um, and then allow it to pass so um sometimes I maybe record yourself doing it so you can just keep your eyes closed and just say okay I've just seen this I've just seen this and I feel like this and then I find that when I talk when I say it out loud what I'm experiencing then they give me more on that sometimes um even just if you find it more comfortable to just sit in silence maybe you want to put some meditative music on maybe you want to put some rain um rain sounds on whatever it is you tailor it to be what you find best and um, at first I um, I got told it's better to sit in a dark room so it helps you calm your mind and helps like you um because obviously you could put an eye mask on because when you um cover your eyes it is very dark so it's easier to see things in your third eye but it freaked me out <laughs> when I first used to do this I used to sit in a dark room and then I was so scared that there was going to be like all sorts of ghosts and things in my room and I didn't like it so then for me that didn't work best because I wouldn't be relaxed I would be nervous and I didn't like it so it just wasn't best for me to do that also I never used to try and do it at night before I was going to bed and freak myself out and um, again this is a lot earlier on in my spiritual journey so I didn't understand how powerful I was but again do things that suit you not what other people say this is what you're meant to do it's meant to feel good within you first Okay, and then when you're finished with all of your messages, if nothing comes through, it's totally fine. Um, try again, just keep trying. And if something does come through, then just acknowledge it and just be grateful that you got it. Um, and then basically, to close yourself off, you just like say something like, thank you so much, Spirit Guys. Um, I'm so grateful to have 
channeled messages from you and I am now closing my channel and then I just imagine my um my lotus flowers like closing and closing and closing and closing so that's like my indication of okay now the channel is closed and you could do like this to open this to close like you can do whatever you want you just have to you need to do the same thing all the time so they know okay she's doing this this means this and it's just a it's a lot easier and it gets more into a routine so it gets faster and faster and then now I'm just like yeah okay give me a message and you know it just happens a lot easier so um I also do do just want to mention that you can always close your third eye at any time you want if you do not like it you can close it and you will always be able to open it again um, but you just have to do the same things to open it again and maybe um, work with it a little bit longer to make sure you're going in baby steps and they might take a little bit longer to, um, you know, introduce you to more things. So because I closed mine, I blocked mine quite quickly because I was so frightened um, at all the things. It never fully closed, but I did block it quite a lot. So it took me a lot longer the second time round to open it but you can always 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 open it again so don't ever feel pressure that you need to open your third eye and stick with it now you could wait another month you could wait another year another 10 years it does not matter you do not need to be able to channel but just know that you can always close it and you can always open it again so don't ever feel pressured to keep it open um, and yeah that's going to be it for today's video I have so much more to say on this topic and um, but that's going to be in part two because it's already half an hour long and comment below on what you found the most helpful and anything else that I can help you with in part two and um, I'm not going to be recording that until next week so comment below and I will add them in for you so that's it and I'm excited to see the feedback from this one I will see you guys next time Thank you.